We're bringing perfect waves to SoCal. I know you have some, you've got trestles and all, but just to give you an idea, so this is our uh, Oki's Peak on the right. Uh, Oki loves the left, of course. He does hack the right as well. But this is uh, Chris Hemsworth, who's, you know, surf park mad, not just for ours. He'd love to go to all of them. Just to point out, he's a big human. He's like 6'3", 6 6'4", 6 and uh, surfs really well. Somebody pointed out in the social media, he's a surfer who just happens to be a global megastar. He's not a megastar who surfs. It's the other way around. So that just gives you an idea of that's at a 4.2 metre stroke out of a five and a half that we'll do on the machine. So it'll be another foot bigger and thicker and it's pretty exciting. So, yeah, great to have him there and just gives you an idea of what's coming. Quick message here from Troy Warfield, uh, who's our chairman. Hi, my name is Troy Warfield and I'm the chairman of Surf Lakes and thanks for a couple of minutes of your time before Aaron gets up and tells you all of the great stuff that we're doing as part of our Surf Lakes Global Expansion. A uh, little bit about my background, uh, many years with consumer goods companies like Unilever and Kimberly Clark up to uh, European general management, then into the service industry with Avis where I was their uh, chief commercial officer as well as their global franchising officer, uh, and then joined the executive committee and board of British Airways. Uh, then moved into this space that I think uh, is where our surf park industry is heading, this competitive socialising space. And uh, I was the president of Top Golf International and took that brand and uh, sold that around $4 billion of contracts uh, all around the world. Uh, then joined uh, a company called the Social Gaming Group, uh, and I'm currently the CEO for that business. And we have uh, eight venues around the world, including one in Brisbane and one in Melbourne, so close to home. And, uh, and then obviously with my hat as chairman of Surf Lakes. So the, the combination of all of those is to really uh, have a good grounding on where this industry has been uh, and where it's heading. And I'm incredibly excited to be part of the Surflakes team. Uh, the technology, I think, is being uh, recognised around the world as, as an outstanding piece of technology in, in an industry that is growing so rapidly and is so relevant to so many, uh, not only potential investors, but also licensees. Uh, around the world. Uh, I'm, I'm also delighted to be chair of, uh, of a board and you know, Aaron Trevis, the CEO and, and founder who uh, has, got a, has had great vision for the business and continues to be a real powerhouse uh, within that and surrounded now by an outstanding team that give us great confidence in terms of where we're heading. So uh, sit back and enjoy what Aaron's about to, to tell you and uh, I uh, am sincerely apologise. I can't be at the Surf Park Summit this time, but uh, I definitely put it in the diary to make sure it's a big part of the agenda going forward. So uh, have a great summit and enjoy Aaron's speech. Proud to have Troy as part of the team, and he's been a great help, uh, you know, for everything that we're doing. Why California? Well, it's obviously the surfing mecca of the US and essentially the world. So this is uh, I won't go through every statistic there, but you can see there's a, a lot of surfers. You've got a lot of uh, culture with uh, all of the brands and high school teams. You know, 1960, the modern culture was born in SoCal. PT, when did you arrive in SoCal, mate? That was in the 70s, wasn't it? It was you, you come across? 1972, but moved here permanently 79. There you go. So we've exported Aussies, now we're exporting Aussie waves. So this is great. The thing is, I don't need to tell you this, it's, it's just really uh, the, the, a key market. And some say, well, gee, why do you want to take it to a surfing area? Well, as you see this morning, you don't always get great waves in California. So we can, we can contribute to the, uh, to the stoke. Uh, there is a big market there, obviously, globally, as well as the US is a key part of that and the surf park market, as we've seen with you know, lots of the studies. I won't go through it all, but it's growing, that's for sure. And, uh, you know, I go back to the very beginning of, you know, the very first wave garden we saw when about 5% of surfers said, yeah, I'd give it a try. And now, of course, every surfer on the planet, the only question we get asked is, when are you open? Hurry up, get one built so we can come and surf it. So that's the same across the world. And, again, if you look at the participants now and where it's going, I think we all agree. I'm of the view that surf parks will 10x surfing overall, um, at least. So it'll take some time. But, you know, we'll, we'll contribute to that. So if you look at the project pillars for this, so you've got the technology, design, manufacturing, construction, the QA of the build. Finance is obviously a key part, and that's really where we're at is focusing on that funding of these projects. There's quite a few that we want to uh, support, uh, the development part and then the operations. So that's sort of one way of packaging those projects. 
And so from the technology side, I mean, you've seen some of this before, but just to highlight the bookends there, you know, highest level levels of wave production. So we're effectively four surf parks in one with our central uh, wave device and those four beach fronts. So that's the sort of productivity that comes out. So it is bigger, but it does give you that simultaneous wave variety where you can have five different levels. So we like to compare that ski industry because you've got multiple runs and multiple opportunities. And so we're, in a sense, the surfing equivalent of that. What I love about it is the offshore conditions guaranteed. And so the one in California, you've got some fairly consistent trade winds here. So we'll line Oki's peak up into that. So, you know, most of its life, you'll have beautiful offshore conditions or lovely glass. So it's a really good thing. And the beachfront is really important. Have we seen the guys were sharing about Arizona monetizing that beachfront in many different ways? So there's lots of ways to uh, capitalize on that. So that is a key point and give you maximum returns on your investment. In terms of our product, we're working with a whole range of experts across the world. So integrated sustainability are here. Uh, Aspect, we our engineers in Australia. Uh, we've got DHI, the Danish Hydrological Institute. So some of the great CFD modeling that we've been doing, and they've actually been really refining their systems of, uh, of CFD, which is great. So they've done a good job. You know, I could go on with, with all. Uh, we've got a preferred partner in, in, a, in America with McCarthy. Um, they've been incredibly helpful um, navigating through this, uh, this market and helping us value engineer and getting that uh, price to where it needs to be. And it'll vary, you know, across the different states you know, a fair bit actually in America, um, but we've got, you know, international sourcing for materials there as well. So just so happens that uh, these guys love to surf. You can see they've put their surf level on their, uh, on their proposal to us and that's been tested and verified. So I can, you know, confidentially just between us, I think Eric's slightly better than Paul, but it depends on the wave. But, you know, they don't, both do better than me, so I'll say nothing. But no, very pleased with the crew and their, their real passion for the industry. It's not just us. They really love, you know, what we're doing, and not just for personal reasons. There's obviously professional, you know, um, recognition behind it, but really proud to have McCarthy as part of our, part of our crew. Uh, in terms of the actual manufacturing, you know, we've got uh, – we've been sourcing out of the USA, but we're also getting pricing out of Asia, Mexico and Brazil now. I was hoping to announce the Brazilian project signing off. We're just waiting for that document, but there's a lot of interest down there as well. And so Damien Borba is going to come and help us from Pacto. He's going to come down and test everything, be our interpreter. You know, is that, is that okay? Yeah, that's good, mate. Thank you. So, uh, but yeah, it's really thrilled. Thomas Crowder, some of you know, Thomas is our guy on the ground down there. He's doing a great job. So, but importantly for us, it is an international market for that, um, yeah, for the procurement of key parts and so, um, yeah, so we're looking at how we can share that and have different hubs in different parts of the world. And so coming back to the machine itself, so it's been, you know, uh, we, we, we had the Mad Max machine and it's been uh, refined a lot. So it's still the same shape and basic size as a ship, but it's, um, yeah, been designed now for 25 years. You've got, you know, millions of cycles at full stroke. We worked out that in the typical operational cycle, it should last about 85 to 125 years, depending on where. So there's a lot of redundancy built into that machine and it's basically no friction. It just responds to the pressure. We've got redundancy in with the compressors, the valves and every other part of it. And so there's been an enormous amount of work, time, money spent on getting this commercial ready, which it is now. So very keen to get it built. Now, it just gives you some idea, some of the concepts we're playing with on, uh, on you know, the, the minimum viable product and you can see there's a whole range of concepts on how to dress that up. So it just gives you an idea of, uh, of where it's at. Treatment, many of you, uh, you know, obviously have been working through this process. For us, there's a base design there but there's a lot of different solutions and there's groups that uh, may consider a saltwater location as well and that's perfectly fine for us. So you can deal with that corrosion and, uh, in our system. The CFD modelling helps with, uh, you know, uh, I guess modelling that um, water movement tranquility studies. So that's been incredibly helpful. Um, so I won't go into that. I'm not the expert there, but certainly it's, a, you know, it is a site-by-site -site solution required, but there are obviously some um, key principles that apply every time. Um, the compressors are a big one. So we're a... Uh, Pneumatic over hydraulic, you know, displacement systems are actually combining that force. You get the flexibility of the pneumatics with the power of that hydraulics. 
and then that direct power with the displacement, which creates that orbital particle motion. The reason people are so excited when they surf our waves, they, there's often a lot of swearing in response. That this feels just like a real wave. How the, the you know, so it's that sort of response. So we don't show a lot of videos of that, but it's, well, you know, you could. It just gets a bit messed up. But it's, it's, it's fun to see the response every time as they're in shock that, wow, this, this feels just like the ocean. Um, and they love the open format where you're surfing away, you know, splitting a peak with some friends. So coming back to the compressors, that's obviously the heart of that. They're all electrical, you can totally uh, renewable energy, you know, as appropriate as you can. Uh, there's a lot of flexibility built into that and, you know, the, the range of wave sizes and the different sort of settings that you can produce through that is quite good. And having multiples there uh, means that it's very, very reliable. And they've been used. So Ingersoll Rand are our preferred provider of that, but we've obviously been dealing with all the majors in that space. One thing that uh, we haven't touched on so much is the monitoring process. So we're connected with these projects for life. We'll be monitoring 24 hours a day and providing that input, you know, as a, a technology provider on the different sites as well as local teams. So that'll be, uh, you know, uh, tracked in throughout the world. So it gives us an ongoing data set for all of the different elements. So there'll be sensors, strain gauges all over those machines. So you'll be able to see well ahead of time if we if we need to tweak, tune and understand that a bit better. So that'll be incredibly helpful over time. The next pillar really is the finance. So this particular project, so you can see we've got, you know, seed capital completed, discussions with, you know, equity partners and debt providers as well. So as we've, you know, you've heard a lot in this conference that there's more and more people, more and more groups coming to the table uh, to help fund these projects. And that's really exciting. And we're, we're, you know, shepherding some of those discussions. Some of the licensees are actually uh, bringing new players there as well. So it's just a matter of time where that comes through. And this one, you know, we're very close to a solution there. So can't wait to see that done so we can get into construction. They've got one final sign off for, uh, for their approvals. Um, and, you know, we want to contribute this. We, we want to partner in, in these first couple of projects um, and we're, you know, without giving too much away, we're, we're planning to actually move our Topco into the US and be a US-based company. Why? Because Australia is one tiny little state compared to all of the Americas. So it just makes sense to be here. So I'm looking forward to being based hopefully somewhere near Trestles. If you've got a cheap apartment somewhere that you want to rent out or sell or whatever, that would be great. So uh, we'll see. We'll see. But so this is the first of many. So, you know, there's California, Texas is moving fast. There's guys in Tennessee that are moving fast, Florida as well. So, yeah, very excited to see these roll out across the country. Uh, and so, you know, for, for those with, you know, the zeros in their bank accounts or uh, can attract that, there's, you know, over a billion dollars worth of projects that we can roll out if you want to get involved. So come and talk to us. In terms of land development, so this particular site you got, well, who was pointing out today, Southern California is the whole population of Australia within a two-hour radius. So that's enough, you know. I think we can make that work. Um, so there's an existing visitation on these particular sites, growth corridor, very supportive city. It's already zoned and approved. There's one amendment to work through, which should happen in October, November. World-class team, start construction next year, open in 2025. So that's the goal. We're nearly there. And uh, really, really looking forward to it. That's just an example layout. I didn't want to give away too much details. But it's, it's happening very well. Uh, in terms of operations, that's really the, the next key thing. So we've drafted up operating standards. And for us now, we've been testing different practices at our demonstration facility. Um, again, ours is a bit different. You know, you've got this central mechanism and you're rotating people through. But the principles are fairly similar across the parks. I guess what's, you know, the way that we want to operate these things is really you're running sets of waves of three, four, five sets of waves at a time. Um, and so you'll be travelling with your group and we find that's easiest. Rather than a paddle battle, if you have a you know, group of five people, you're taking that session together. And so many people have commented on the fact, and they probably share this at other parks as well, it's the most fun you've ever had surfing because you're not competing. You're not trying to drop in on each other. You're not trying to wrestle off someone else. You know where the waves are breaking. And uh, I guess in this format, because you're there and you're splitting a peak and sharing stories, there's been so many that have come back afterwards and, you know, I'm getting hugged by grown men with tears in their eyes. It's a bit awkward really, but, you know, so we're, this is just phenomenal. It's the best thing ever, right? So it's that sort of response which really encourages us. Um, but, you know, in terms of operating the lakes, we're partnering with uh, Icon Leisure as well to – because, to, you know, we're not – 
you know, perimeter to design experts, right? We focused in on the wave and that uh, surf park operations, but they can provide a lot of input. How do you manage, you know, half a million people a year, a million people a year around this perimeter? What about a 10,000, you know, pe person, you know, uh, festival, music festival or concert or, or whatever you have, a big competition? So that design is really important. It's the total experience that matters. And, you know, as, as Jeff was saying with uh, ball face, you know, the quality of the soup is a big deal, right? So Mama Jackie, our site coordinator in Yapoon, she'll love to hear that because she puts on a great spread and that's been part of our vibe all the way through. So, yeah, it's uh, it's been really important. So it's great and encouraging to hear all the different stories of people embracing that. So it's it's not just a churn through, get your wave, go home. It's really about building the whole vibe and community and that's important to us. So we're working with uh, guys like Access for booking and entry and I know there's a whole world opening up with that type of systems as well and there's other specialists as required. So, and we're actually developing a global membership platform, if you like, a, a marketing layer uh, to, to help promote, you know, our brand and these sites ahead of time. And so uh, Brad Hutchins is working with some leading experts in that space. So as we get closer to, you know, opening, we'll start to launch those things. And, uh, you know, we've got the guys like Ombi and Pacto and Degree 33, and there's many others we're talking to about how to build that community and incentivize people to get involved and to, um, yeah, be part of our global family as we roll out these parks. So overview, so you can see this one, you know, 14-acre park. We've got the uh, the specs here, the 2,000 rides an hour, so you've got 200 surfers. The other thing that's not talked about so much is in the um, the channels that we have, they can be activated a lot of different ways. So you can have people in there with different craft and what have you. So I can see 100 people across those different channels as well. So it's another revenue stream. It's another exciting format, if you like. Um, look, there's some predicted revenue in there. I'm not going to promise too much on there, but it's certainly got that potential in this area. You've got those five levels of waves, half a mile of beachfront to activate. So it really is, you know, it's a decent sized show, but in this market, it makes total sense to go big. And so we look forward to that. Um, that is Oki at Oki's left over there. So uh, we've actually, McCarthy have got a golden shovel with our logo on it ready for Oki. So as soon as we can, we'll fly Oki over. You'll get to meet him and uh, get that shovel in the ground. So look, that's it for me. If there's any questions, I think we've got a minute left. I can't say too much. It's, it's south of San Francisco, I, I can tell you that. <laughs> Southern California. That's right, yeah, nobody knows where it is and you'll never hear me say it. Yeah, early next year, early to mid next year, I'll say, but yes, soon. <laughs> <laughs>